Aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. So if we track and optimize well-established biomarkers of organ and systemic health, can aging and disease risk be slowed? So with that in mind, uh, earlier this week, I blood tested for the sixth time in 2021. And using Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator, which is a metric of biological age, we can see that my biological age is 36.9 years, which is 12 years younger than my chronological age. Now, for more context, because this is only one blood test, let's have a look at the other five biological age results using Morgan Levine's test in 2021. And that's what's shown here. So Morgan Levine's biological age on the y-axis plotted against time. And so starting with my most recent data, 36.9 years, that's approximately the same as my last test a couple months ago, 37.1, but nowhere near as good as my first test uh, earlier this year of 32.7 years. So for those six tests, my average biological age using Levine's test is 35.6 years. So how did these data compare with 2020 data? So year over year comparison. Uh, and that's what's shown here. So starting uh, with my lowest value, which was 33.5 years, I also had a higher value of 39.8 years. And the average for those six tests in 2020 was also 35.6 years. So even though the averages of 2020 and 2021 are similar or the same, uh, we can evaluate whether they're statistically significantly uh, the same or different using a two sample t-test. And when I did that, these two groups of data, uh, so 2020 versus 2021, are not significantly different. So one could uh, say that my biological age has been stable over these 12 blood tests at 35.6 years. Now note that I have three blood tests uh, from 2018 to 2019, and over those three tests, my average Levine biological age is 36.1 years. Now, three tests is probably not enough to get an overall assessment for uh, biological age. I think you need more data, and I trust that the, the data for 12 blood tests more than I trust the data for three blood tests. Now note that even if all nine biomarkers on Levine's test stay the same year over year, biological age increases by 0.9 years for every one year increase for chronological age. In contrast, aging.ai does not include chronological age in its model, so greater reductions for biological age are possible. So with that in mind, what's my biological age using aging.ai? So using aging.ai uh, 3.0, and note that uh, if you want to calculate your own Levine's biological age, I'll include a link from my website in the video's description. So it's a, it, obviously it's a free link, and so it's free to use, and so is aging.ai. Hopefully it stays that way uh, for both, well, at least for aging.ai. The Excel spreadsheet is free. We can use that anytime. So using aging.ai 3.0 and its 19 blood biomarkers, as shown here, data for those biomarkers, my biological age is 29, which is 19.9 years, almost 20 years younger than my chronological age. So just like we did for Levine's data, uh, for more context, let's have a look at previous aging.ai data uh, that I have over the past few years. And that's what's shown here. So aging.ai age on the y-axis, and it's going to be plotted against time. So I have data for aging.ai starting in 2009. And note that C-reactive protein is not found on a typical uh, uh, chemistry, standard blood chemistry and uh, CBC that you get at a yearly physical. It's an extra test that I've had to order. And I, it wasn't until 2018 and 2019 that I started measuring it and then measuring it at every test in 2020 and beyond. So in contrast, aging.ai, you don't need CRP. So uh, it, all of these blood tests are found on the, uh, uh, the blood test that you get when you go to a yearly physical. So I have more of that data. So from 2009 to 2013, shown in purple, I have three blood test measurements for aging.ai, and we can see that my average uh, age is 32 years, my average biological age using aging.ai. Uh, now note that I wasn't tracking my diet, and what I mean by that is if you haven't seen other videos, in 2015 I started tracking my diet by weighing all my food, logging it using a chronometer, and then uh, looking for correlations between my diet with the biomarkers in an attempt to optimize the biomarkers. So I started diet tracking, as I mentioned, in 2015 going forward, and starting in 2016, I have data for aging.ai using that approach. So when looking at the number of blood tests and my average for each year since 2016, let's have a look at that data. So in 2016, over two blood tests using aging.ai, got an age of 28 for, for the average, 29.3 average over four blood tests in 2017. And although it's hard to see, over six blood tests in uh, 2018, it was 29.5. 30.3 average over three tests in 2019, and then six blood tests in 2020 with an average uh, aging.ai age of 31.3. Now, it should be obvious that there's an increasing biological age here 
from 2016 to 2020. And fortunately for the six tests in 2021, my aging.ai age was 29.8, which is definitely going in the right direction. Um, and as I mentioned, when I get my blood test data, I uh, look for correlations between diet with the, with the blood biomarkers and then try different interventions to try to optimize all of these blood biomarkers and more. So my average over these 27 tests since I started tracking my diet and using regular interventions based on that data is 29.9 years. So um, as a summary of my aging.ai data, since I started tracking diet and attempting these various interventions, I've been able to keep my aging.ai range in the 28 to 31 year old range. All right, that's all for now. Uh, if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.